subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon, to never miss a video from us. Hi! Welcome to Test Prep Training. Today, we will discuss about exam, a Z304, Microsoft Azure Architect Design. This exam has been built for cloud administrators, cloud DBS, and clients to implement solutions. Microsoft Exam, a Z304, Overview. Name of the exam is Exam, a Z304, Microsoft Azure Architect Design. Code of the exam is AZ304. There are 40 to 60 questions. Format of questions is multiple choice, or multiple select. It costs around $165. Duration of exam is 150 minutes. The language available is English. Scheduling platform is Pearson VUE. Now, we will talk about recommended knowledge. A candidate for this exam should have advanced experience and knowledge of IT operations, including networking, virtualization, identity, security, business continuity, disaster recovery, data platform, budgeting, and governance. This role should manage how decisions in each area affect an overall solution. In addition, candidates in this role should have expert level skills in Azure administration and have experience with Azure development and DevOps processes. Scoring Policy for Exams When you complete a beta exam, you do not receive a score immediately, because the scoring model for the exam is not yet finalized. You usually receive your exam score within 2-3 to three weeks, after the exam becomes available worldwide. This can be up to 16 weeks after you take the exam, depending on when in the beta period you took the exam. Now, Exam Retake Policy First, passing a beta exam in your certification path counts toward your certification. You do not need to retake the exam in its final version. Make sure that you take another exam within a year, so you can take advantage of the 25% discount you earn for taking the beta exam. Second, if you do not pass the beta exam, you cannot retake the beta exam. If you are interested in earning a certification that requires successful completion of that exam, you must wait to retake the exam at regular cost when it's live, or you can apply the 25% discount that you received for participating in the beta exam. How to register for the AZ304 exam? Follow the steps written below to register for the exam. First, go to the Microsoft site and find your certificate in the list. Then select Schedule Exam to register. Second, if the certificate will be available for your country, then you will be able to select the exam during the registration process. Third, you will also select the language of the greeter, proctor, and proctoring software. Let's discuss about academic pricing on the certifications. Academic pricing on Microsoft Certified Professional Exams is available in most countries, except India and China. You must verify your student status before scheduling your exam in order to be eligible for academic pricing. Now, applying student status through your account profile. First, sign in with your Microsoft account credentials. Second, select profile settings from the account menu at the top of the page. Third, in the job function menu, select or ensure that you have selected student. Fourth, look for the academic pricing notice that appears next to the job function menu. If your student status has not yet been validated, click get verified to verify your status. Applying student status when registering for an exam. First, sign in with your Microsoft account credentials. Second, on the exam for which you want to register, click schedule exam. Third, on the confirm your exam registration details page. Ensure that the job function field displays student verified. If it does not, click get verified to validate your status or click edit to change your status. Verifying your academic status. Select the method you wish to use to verify your status. The methods include first school issued email account, second school network credentials, third international student identity card ISIC. Fourth, verification code from a Microsoft representative or your institution's administrator. Fifth, documentation. Now, other exam policies. Number one, design monitoring which comprises of 10 to 15% weightage in exam. Number two, design identity and security which comprises of 25 to 30% weightage in exam. Number three, design data storage which comprises of 15 to 20% weightage in exam. Number four, Design Business Continuity which comprises of 10 to 15% weightage in exam. Number 5, Design Infrastructure which comprises of 25 to 30% weightage in exam. We will discuss about each domain in detail. 
Design monitoring which comprises of 10 to 15% weightage in exam. Design for cost optimization. This is divided into eight parts. First, recommend a solution for cost management and cost reporting. Second, recommend solutions to minimize costs. Third, design a solution for logging and monitoring. Fourth, determine levels and storage locations for logs. Fifth, plan for integration with monitoring tools including Azure Monitor and Azure Sentinel. Sixth, recommend appropriate monitoring tools for a solution. Seventh, choose a mechanism for event routing and escalation. Eighth, recommend a logging solution for compliance requirements. Design identity and security which comprises of 25 to 30 percent weightage in exam. It can be explained in four parts. Number one, design authentication. This is divided into nine parts. First, recommend a solution for single sign-on. Second, recommend a solution for authentication. Third, recommend a solution for conditional access, including multi-factor authentication. Fourth, recommend a solution for network access authentication. Fifth, recommend a solution for a hybrid identity, including Azure AD Connect and Azure AD. Sixth, Connect Health. Seventh, recommend a solution for user self-service. Eighth, recommend and implement a solution for B2B integration. Ninth, NOT, federation with ADFS. Number two, design authorization. This is divided into four parts. First, choose an authorization approach. Second, recommend a hierarchical structure that includes management groups, subscriptions, and resource groups. Third, recommend an access management solution, including RBAC policies, access reviews, role assignments, physical access, privileged identity management, Azure AD. Fourth, identity protection, just-in-time access. Number three, design governance. This is divided into three parts. First, recommend a strategy for tagging. Second, recommend a solution for using Azure policy. Third, recommend a solution for using Azure Blueprint. Number four, design security for applications. This is divided into three parts. First, recommend a solution that includes Key Vault. It is divided in three sub parts. What can be stored in Key Vault? Key Vault operations. Key Vault regions. Second, recommend a solution that includes Azure AD managed identities. Third, recommend a solution for integrating applications into Azure AD. Design data storage which comprises of 15 to 20% weightage in exam. We can understand this in two parts. Number one, design a solution for databases. This is divided into six parts. First, select an appropriate data platform based on requirements. Second, recommend database service tier sizing. Third, recommend a solution for database scalability. Fourth, recommend a solution for encrypting data at rest, data in transmission and data in use design data integration. Fifth, recommend a data flow to meet business requirements. Sixth, recommend a solution for data integration, including Azure Data Factory, Azure Databricks, Azure Data Lake, Azure Synapse Analytics. Number two, select an appropriate storage account. This is divided into three parts. First, choose between storage tiers. Second, recommend a storage access solution. Third, recommend storage management tools, Design business continuity which comprises of 10 to 15% weightage in exam. This can be explained in two parts. Number one, design a solution for backup and recovery. This is divided into five parts. First, recommend a recovery solution for Azure hybrid and on-premises workloads that meets recovery objectives, RTO, RLO, RPO. Second, design an Azure site recovery solution. This is divided into four sub parts. Recommends a site recovery replication policy. Recommends a solution for site recovery capacity. Recommends a solution for site failover and failback, planned or unplanned. Recommends a solution for the site recovery network. Third, recommend a solution for recovery in different regions. Fourth, recommend a solution for Azure backup management. Fifth, design a solution for data archiving and retention. This can be divided into five sub parts. Recommends storage types and methodology for data archiving. Identifies business compliance requirements for data archiving. Identifies requirements for data archiving. Identifies SLAs for data archiving. Recommend a data retention policy. Number two, design for high availability. 
This is divided into five parts. First, recommend a solution for application and workload redundancy, including compute, database, and storage. Second, recommend a solution for auto scaling. Third, identify resources that require high availability. Fourth, identify storage types for high availability. Fifth, recommend a solution for geo redundancy of workloads. Design infrastructure which comprises of 25 to 30 percent weightage in exam. This can better be understood in four parts. Number 1. Design a compute solution. This is divided into five parts. First, recommend a solution for compute provisioning. Second, determine appropriate compute technologies, including virtual machines, app services, service fabric, Azure functions, Windows virtual desktop, and containers. Third, recommend a solution for containers. Fourth, AKS versus ACI, and the configuration of each one. Fifth, recommend a solution for automating compute management. Number two, design migrations. It is divided into four parts. First, assess and interpret on-premises servers, data, and applications for migration. Second, recommend a solution for migrating applications and VMs. Third, recommend a solution for migration of databases. Fourth, determine migration scope, including redundant, related, trivial, and outdated data. Number three, design a network solution. This is divided into six parts. First, recommend a solution for network addressing and name resolution. Second, recommend a solution for network provisioning. Third, recommend a solution for network security. It is divided in three sub parts, private endpoints, firewalls, gateways, etc. Fourth, recommend a solution for network connectivity to the internet, on-premises networks, and other Azure virtual networks. Fifth, recommend a solution for automating network management. Sixth, recommend a solution for load balancing and traffic routing. Number four, design an application architecture. It is divided into two parts. First, recommend a microservices architecture including event grid, event hubs, service bus, storage queues, logic apps, Azure functions, and webhooks. Second, recommend an orchestration solution for deployment of applications including ARM templates, logic apps, or Azure functions. It is divided into nine sub parts. Select an automation method. Choose which resources or lifecycle steps will be automated. Design integration with other sources such as an ITSM solution. Recommend a solution for monitoring automation. Recommend a solution for API integration. Design an API gateway strategy. Determine policies for internal and external consumption of APIs. Recommend a hosting structure for API management. Recommend when and how to use API keys. Now, let's discuss about preparatory guide. Number 1. Microsoft Learning Paths. Number 2. Instructor-led training. Number 3. Books. Number 4. Practice papers and sample papers. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel.